Welcome to lesson uh, 30 of our study of Hebrews. And today we are doing Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 3. Verses 1 to 3. Run with perseverance, looking to Jesus. Let us pray that God will bless this time for us. Father, we want to thank you for this time. We thank you that, Lord, you have made it possible for us to join in this study. We pray you will bind all hindrances and make this time special for us, O Lord. Grant us the help of your Holy Spirit so that, Lord, we will understand the passage that is before us and, Lord, also know how to apply it to our lives. So we thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, today our study is on uh, Hebrews chapter 12 and verses 1 to 3. Verses 1 to 3. And uh, the writer uh, had so far listed uh, numerous examples of uh, the heroes of faith from the Jewish history. Actually, as we remember, he started with uh, Abel in the Old Testament. And then he, he listed so many of the heroes of faith. He then called on his readers to consider Jesus and exhorted them to keep their eyes fixed on him and learn from his endurance. And uh, he, he says that they needed this uh, to help them uh, not to grow weary and lose heart. And that is the way in which uh, uh, the writer uh, introduces uh, uh, chapter 12. And uh, so we are similarly uh, challenged. We are similarly challenged to fix our eyes on Jesus so that we do not grow weary or lose heart. Weary or lose heart is actually two things that are important. Getting tired, we get tired and then we get discouraged. I suppose those are the two thoughts that are there tired and discouraged. So he does not want us to get tired or discouraged. Um, friends, thank you all for praying for Saras. Saras is here. Um, hi, Saras. Hi. <laughs> and uh, so she will be uh, not able to be with us through the study, but just here. Thank you for praying. Yeah. And uh, so today we will see uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to three. Uh, let us start with the, the first verse, uh, uh, verse one. Uh, uh, Tony, can I ask you to read verse one of Hebrews chapter 12, please? Sure, sure. Hebrews chapter 12, verse one. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked for us. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. And uh, friends, that's the passage for us. Uh, I mean, that's the first verse of the three verses that we will be studying together. And so when, he, when, uh, when the writer says, therefore, uh, so he's connecting back to the previous thought. Huh? He says, uh, therefore, since you are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. And uh, so these witnesses uh, referred to are the heroes of faith uh, mentioned in chapter 11. So he has mentioned all these heroes in chapter 11 uh, specifically. And then he says, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of many of witnesses and the number of witnesses actually uh, there we can see he mentions the uh, Old Testament uh, witnesses uh, up to the point of actually Jesus is coming but if we think about it this uh, witnesses has greatly increased over the years cloud of witnesses cloud of witnesses he says so all these who lived in faith and died are uh, actually uh, more than uh, what uh, was that 2,000 years ago when the writer actually wrote his name. So there are more heroes of faith beyond those mentioned 
uh, in actually uh, Hebrews chapter uh, chapter eleven. Yeah. <clears throat> so the the writer picks up all these uh, you know heroes of faith and he mentions them. And later in question two, we will uh, we will see about this great cloud of witnesses. Now I put a note here. These witnesses are not to be seen as spectators cheering. You know, sometimes uh, you know some have mentioned that. You know, they said since you have uh, such a great cloud of witnesses, and then he talks about a race. It is something like a stadium, and then in that stadium, the, we are like all running. You know. And then there are spectators who are cheering us on, cheering us on. It is not so much in that way. It's not that kind of uh, witnesses. Huh? But as those whose loyalty and exemplary lives inspire us to follow their example. And so F.F. Bruce, in his commentary, uh, says, says this. Huh? It is not so much they who look at us as we who look to them for encouragement. So when we, uh, when we uh, are in different uh, situations, we look to these heroes and they are in a way encouraging us. They are encouraged. They have gone through similar challenges. They have finished their course of race. They have joined the cloud of witnesses. And so it is, uh, we must look at it that way. And so he mentions, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. Now he's talking about a race. He's talking about believers running a race. And then he says, throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. There are two things here. First, throw off everything. And uh, actually when, uh, when, uh, when an athlete is in a race, uh, he must be you know, not carrying extra baggage. Huh? And uh, so the need to decisively dispose anything that hinders the race. Actually, the, the race is harder to run with unnecessary baggage. So you carry this, carry that and all that. And then it's difficult to run the race. And these may not necessarily be like bad things. No? That's why he put two parts, throw off everything. And then he mentions uh, sin that so easily entangles. This can be together or it can be seen side by side. And uh, in a way, uh, throw off everything would be, in a way, we need pruning. Believers need pruning and uh, so that all the wasteful things are cut off. And then you are trim and slim and fit to run. And uh, so athletes discipline themselves to keep fit for the race. When athletes uh, actually uh, prepare themselves, what they sometimes do is they carry heavy things when they are training. And so when they are training, they carry weights and all that and they run. And then uh, later when the actual race comes, of course, they'll put off all the weights and all that, and then they, are, you know, they can run faster. So athletes discipline themselves to keep fit for the race and discard you know, things like deceptions. There can be wrong teachings. And uh, you know, all these false teachings and uh, put away all that. All those things are going to cause problems, distractions uh, in your race. You can't be focused. You can't be running. And there are always different challenges for the faithful. Challenges will always come. There cannot be a time when there will be no challenges. So he says, throw off everything. You are in a race. You need to keep focused. Throw off everything that actually will hinder you. And then he says, sin uh, that so easily entangles. Now we are weak and can easily succumb to sin. Here the context would suggest the sin of doubt. Don't doubt. <coughs> because they are running a race. They are in a race. And then uh, there are so many challenges that they are going through. And then they are, they are, they are, they are told the sin that so easily entangles. We are of course uh, while the context here suggests the sin of doubt and uh, that can come against our faith, if we fall to temptation, we become guilty and will feel discouraged. So the, it, we are living in a wicked world and we all are living in a wicked world and so easily we can get caught. 
and we can fall. And if we are not careful, we take our eyes away from Jesus, then there will be difficulty. Then there will be difficulty. So he says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Now, so there is a race to be run. There's a race to be run and they are to do it with perseverance, uh, not just uh, running half-heartedly, you know, to run with perseverance and uh, the race marked out for us. So there is, uh, in this running, I believe there is a running away from sin. So you are running and you're running away from sin and we are running towards the goal set by Jesus, set by the Lord. And uh, we, in a way, run towards the Lord. Now running with fervor and excitement. We are running with fervor means we are excited. We are moving on. We are running, giving our best. Running with conviction and commitment. With conviction, we are convicted that this is the thing that God wants us to do, the Lord wants us to do. There's a deep conviction and there is commitment. In the race, there has to be this. And the race that is marked out for each of us is unique. And uh, we will talk more about, uh, discuss more about the race that is marked out for us. But uh, actually in this race, it is not a race running against one another, no, not to outrun. It's not a question of who comes out first. We all have our race marked out for us. It's not who runs first, who runs fast, but who runs and completes the race. And our race is our own. It's a unique kind of a race. That is why it is unique. And so we are called to run this race. And so friends, um, there are two questions that I've asked uh, based on this one verse. And, uh, but before I actually go to the discussion question, any comment or question on this uh, opening uh, verse of chapter 12 of Hebrews? Anyone? Any clarification? Some of it, of course, will come out in our discussion itself. Huh? So in the discussion question one, I have raised this question. In what ways can the church help make the heroes of faith found in the Bible become a source of inspiration? See, actually, we have seen, we have said, I have said that these uh, cloud of witnesses are not cheering us on. Not that they are looking at us and cheering, but we are looking at them for encouragement. And uh, when we look at Abraham, how are we encouraged? Or when we look at David, or when we, when we look at all the various uh, people who have run the race, and I've also mentioned that these are more than mentioned in Hebrews chapter 11. And so how do we uh, make that known? How do we know? In what ways can the church help make the heroes of faith found in the Bible become a source of inspiration? How can these people who are mentioned and more in the Bible and outside the Bible, there have been many people who have run the race, the people of faith, and they become exemplary for us. They become, you know, to inspire us. Now, how can they, such people, cloud of witnesses, become our inspiration? Anyone? Uh, I, I think the... The obvious things is like Abraham. I mean, he's a man of great faith. I mean, that will give us uh, an example of how a, a man of faith should respond to the challenges in life. Even when he told uh, Sarah that he's going to get, get his uh, baby in, when he's 90 years old. I mean, humanly, you think that, oh, that is absolutely ridiculous. And he said, they're going to sacrifice your son. He said, that is also ridiculous. But you see, the thing is, a man of faith, he knows that when God asks him to do something, he knows that God will fulfill and deliver him from all the, the humanly perceptions that what he's doing is wrong or, or ridiculous. So, I mean, that is that, that calls for great faith. And sometimes in our own life, there are times that when we go through the valleys of life, we also feel very discouraged and say, oh, what, what is happening? 
Should I continue like that? And then we say that, oh no, God says that I will deliver you and I will be with you and I will not desert you. And you know that it comes out in the Bible that these are all truth that we need. And these are the promises that we need to hold on you know, in our storms of life, so to speak. Yes. Thanks, uh, William. Uh, that definitely helps to see. Yeah? So taking just the example of Abraham, both to believe that he will have a son and both to believe that even though God had asked him to sacrifice him, there might be something beyond God is able to do, but obedience, believing, faith, and with obedience. So uh, when we find ourselves in difficult situation, Abraham uh, becomes like an inspiration. So how can, uh, how can the church help make these people uh, become uh, inspirational? See, to start with, we must know these people, isn't it? Huh? How do we know this, Abraham, unless we read the Bible? And uh, I guess Bible studies uh, like this uh, remind us of uh, the heroes in the Bible. I mean, as to their efforts and the uh, and the fact that sometimes they acknowledge that they are weak. For example, Moses stammers, but yes. what did God do? God told him, just go ahead, I'm with you. You know, so and these are lessons that we learn in such a gathering of Bible study, and we are reminded that God is always there to lead when He picks you. Yes. Thanks, Tony. So the Bible study becomes crucial. And uh... What about you know, focusing on like biblical characters, character studies, Bible study, and specifically character study. And when we study characters, different, different characters, that can become uh, also helpful, isn't it? Bible study in the church is one thing. Then the, what about a Sunday school? You see, in the Sunday school, the children are also taught about biblical characters. They have become uh, aware. And... Uh, Heroes of faith, yes, yes. Heroes of faith. In what other way, apart from Bible study and Sunday school, we actually get to hear about these uh, characters of the Bible? Yes, sir. I was wondering whether there are some uh, Christian movies. No? I haven't come uh, across uh, that. Uh, one is reading something, seeing, like getting entertained at the same time, learning about a person. Uh, thanks, Aris. Uh, Saras is saying, you know, we one thing is we can read about these Bible characters. The other one is sometimes they have video and uh, you know, short movies, maybe, about the life of uh, some of these Bible characters. And then they become, you know, challenging. And they, you know, it, uh, it becomes informative and also inspirational. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Pastor? Yes, Julie. I feel that we can also get it from the songs. Because the Psalms has got lots of songs yes. that tells us about how, how one person has got, I mean, the heroes have gone through life and then we can actually see it from there. I mean, we, we have to keep reminding ourselves every time we're in difficulties, we must look to the Bible for inspiration, for help, for, for encouragement. Yes, thanks, Julie. So the, the Bible itself, the Psalms are the song that uh, Julie is pointing us to and which becomes uh, not helpful. And uh, so we, we do that. Yes. Uh, yeah. Now, I just want to extend that question uh, into question two. And who are these additional heroes of faith? I say that there are beyond the cloud of witnesses mentioned in uh, Hebrews 11. There's beyond that, who have joined the cloud of witnesses. And... Uh, no, who are they? Where can we get information regarding them? And how can they become an inspiration? Uh, who are they? Who are these additional heroes of faith? I think it refers to uh, quite a number of uh, people who are, who are of great faith. And I think even if you talk about April, uh, what not that? Uh, no, no, but just the, the, the evangelist Billy Graham. Yes. You know, you talk about people like that. Then you also talk about Augustine, you know, 
through yes. the times. There are so many of these people whom we read and we are encouraged and witness. Even on a Sunday when you go up and say that, oh, I've got a witness, I've, I've got a testimony to share. So yes. these are the things that you actually help. These are all called heroes of the faith. You know? Yes. Some are living witnesses, huh? like, like uh, William mentioned about those who give testimony. But normally when we say cloud of witnesses uh, no, uh, surrounded, we talk about those who have lived and died. And so you mentioned rightly, Augustine, I quite often in my pulpit preaching, I talk about a person like Tertullian. <clears throat> and then I say Tertullian, when the church was suffering and uh, people were dying, the martyrs, and then uh, he challenged the emperors, Tertullian, the early church father. He said, the more you kill us, the more we will grow. And then he made a statement, the, the blood of the martyr is the seed of the church. The blood of the martyrs, the seed of the church. Now that is inspirational, no? that's encouragement. So when we see people dying, then we might say, oh, yo, this is terrible. No? And, uh, but instead of getting discouraged, we remember a person like Tertullian who said, the blood of the martyr, the seed of the church. What about missionaries? So many missionaries. Billy Graham is one person, definitely an amazing evangelist. No? And uh, his uh, preaching was so effective. And uh, missionaries. And I'm always uh, challenged by the missionary to, to, to Burma uh, or Myanmar, uh, Adoniram Judson. And uh, then there's Hudson Taylor. And there are so many missionaries who have joined the cloud of witnesses. And, uh, and so others who have lived uh, a life uh, of faith and have now died. And so these are, there are many people like that you know, who have joined the cloud of witnesses. Sometimes we hear it being said uh, when someone who's a, a, a great Christian, great church worker, and then he has died, then we say something like, he has now joined the cloud of witnesses, joined the cloud of witnesses, meaning he has died, but he continues to be an encouragement by his life, by his words, and by his works. Now, so, so there are many people like that. Now, I've asked another question. Where can we get information regarding such people? Where can we get uh, information? Anyone? Where can we get information? Okay, you want to know about uh, Billy Graham, or you want to know about uh, no, uh, all these missionaries. Where can we get information? I think there are lots of Christian literature. So you, yes. you walk into the like uh, Salvation bookstore, you yes. find plenty of uh, books that you want to read, you know, from, ranging from all types of subjects. You know? yes. And that would be useful if you want to know more about them. Yes, correct. So there are the literature, there are books. And uh, so where do we get this? They are from books. So we, 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 when we study church history, uh, then we will see there are many, many people who stand out. In their time, they were uh, very exemplary and they now uh, you know, inspire us. So there are biographies. And nowadays we have a lot of biographies. Um, if you go to a Christian bookshop, uh, you can see uh, biographies of uh, different uh, heroes of faith. And it is good for us to read, to be inspired and to be challenged. So where do we get this information? Church history, biographies. Mm -hmm. And how can they become inspiration and inspiration? You know, when we get discouraged, huh, when we feel uh, terrible, and uh, I, I have a person huh, who uh, I heard a, 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 a Christian uh, preacher uh, once uh, telling in India when I was there, he's telling, when I feel very discouraged and I feel uh, no, uh, feel like that, he, he said, I go to the cemetery. Why does he go to the cemetery? He said he goes to the cemetery and sees the Christian missionaries who had come to India, who gave so much of themselves, died and are buried there. They are not Indians. They are you no know, from different parts of the world. They have come. They gave so much. And then he says, looking at the uh, graves, right? he says, I am challenged. 
here are people who came and sacrificed and lived and died. What is my struggle? No? What is my struggle? So, so uh, they can become an inspiration like that. And uh, I remember when I read, when I read uh, Adoniram Judson's life, he went to Myanmar and there are no uh, Myanmar Bible, no dictionary to change, uh, to turn to. But he wrote the dictionary. He translated the Bible. He put so much of time into it. He even forgot his English. He couldn't express his English in English properly because he got so soaked into the Myanmar language, the Burmese language. And I said, wow, this man is given his best for the Lord. What am I giving for the Lord? Inspirational, inspirational. But reading biographies is a great challenge. Cloud of witnesses. So many have lived by faith and they've moved on. And what am I doing? Huh? And so it makes us humble and it makes us challenge. Yes, challenge. Yes, sir. You know, we uh, had some books on the heroes, you know, yeah. especially printed out. Yes, yes. We're selling it in the bookshop. Yeah. And as, 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 as a pastor, I used to introduce these books and make it available. I say read and pass it on to others. And I think we must do that. You know, we must read, pass on to others so that they can read on. Okay. We will move to the... the Next part, this is, which is in verse 2, huh? uh, which is in verse 2. Uh, Nelly, can you read just verse 2 for us of Hebrews chapter 11, please? Okay, Pastor. Thank you. Verse 2, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding his shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Okay, thank you, Nelly. That's an interesting version. Uh, yeah, thank you. It's helpful. And uh, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. And so let us fix our eyes on Jesus, uh, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning his shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, very loaded verse, and these three verses, but they're all very loaded. And then he says, uh, and he says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. And uh, so, uh, so to receive guidance and inspiration from Jesus. Now, Jesus is the best example. Uh, he, you know, so if we look to Jesus, let us fix our eyes on Jesus to receive guidance and inspiration from him, the author and perfecter of our faith. Actually, Jesus is the one who started our faith. He's the one who got the thing started. Huh? And uh, he's the one who made it perfect. And so uh, what a uh, better place to see than the, what better person to see than to Jesus. So let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, and then the, the writer adds uh, another information uh, of what kind of a race he ran. Who for the joy set before him. And uh, he had a joy. So he, he struggled and went through all these difficulties, but there was a joy before him. And uh, so the end of his suffering and all that, he, he, he had something special. Who for the joy set before him and uh, endured the cross. Now the cross was very, very painful. Cross was very, very painful because the cross actually, cross actually means three things, no? I've told at different times. Cross means uh, suffering, it means shame, and it means death. But Jesus endured the cross, scorning its shame. So it, it, it didn't overwhelm him, huh? the shame. And uh, he was made a public uh, mockery. But Jesus didn't mind that. He was willing to go through that. And uh, so uh, why was he able to do that? Endure the cross, scorning its shame uh, for the joy set before him. And what was that joy? The joy, of course, was the salvation of souls. He knew that if he had, he had to do that, 
that will uh, go through the suffering had to die the sacrificial death uh, only then the people can be saved so he joy said uh, for your salvation of souls and dear the cross conning it shame uh, and then set down see set down would mean work completed work completed so jesus set down jesus successfully completed his mission at the right hand of the throne of god now all this we must uh, more than uh, literally seeing it as right hand you know left and right kind of thing they are also they also have symbol symbolism huh? at the right hand of the throne of god jesus humbled himself remember he became man he left the glory of heaven and he came down in human form so he came down humbly and uh, took upon himself human flesh so jesus humbled and took human form and is now exalted to the highest place of glory and authority right hand would in, would uh, imply that he has gone to the highest place of both uh, glory and authority he gave up and now it is given to him in philippians chapter 2 uh you know paul talks about how he is now exalted above all things in heaven on earth and under the earth he is exalted jesus is exalted because he went through the cross and uh, so that's the verse that we next have to you know to to study and uh, any 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 comment before i actually go to the question 3 very loaded verse is neda huh? and uh, it says uh, let us fix our eyes on jesus the author and perfecter of our faith who for the joy set before him endured the cross scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of god <coughs> and so that is jesus uh, our great uh, savior who went through that and of course we turn your eyes upon jesus look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will go strangely dim because you are fixed on jesus not fixed on uh, other you know there, there are problems remember when peter was uh, when jesus was walking on the water peter said lord call me you no know, call me to walk and come so he as long as he fixed his eyes on jesus peter actually walked on water but the moment he took his eyes off and saw the water of course he began to sing god help me no he said but it's a very challenging thing but here we are said fix our eyes on jesus but i've asked this question what can make believers take their eyes off jesus what can make us we are here we are said to fix our eyes on jesus so as long as we keep our eyes on jesus think we can move forward but what can make us uh, take our eyes off jesus anyone pleasures of life pleasures yes pleasures of life pleasures of life thanks nelly that is there is neither huh? so those are attracting those are attracting so there are many attractions in the world and uh, so uh, we actually cannot avoid seeing them huh? but here fix our eyes on jesus would mean as do as, as, as much as they are there don't keep your focus on them but they are very uh, attractive and uh, they are pleasures they are human way of profitable and so we get distracted anything else i think uh, i would define them as two into two broad categories for believers to take your eyes off of jesus one we call that the uh, pull factor mm. the other one is the push factor okay. the pull the pull factor is the external you know as as yeah. uh, daily says pleasure of the world you know all the worldly desires your wealth your money and things yeah. like that and sometimes we we chase even a career when you chase a career too much we tend yeah. to neglect what is your true faith so those are the external uh, factors yeah we call that the pull factors the push factors is when you yourself suddenly has lost 
the passion for Christ. Yeah. yeah. And then maybe you're disconnected. You, you don't read the Bible. You don't pray. And uh, you think that, oh, even the church is not ministering to me. And uh, you feel that you, you are not actually connected to God anymore, you know, because you are like floating all the while. That is internal, you know. It's not from outside. Sometimes you just feel, that, oh, why is my faith so dry? I'm not yeah. doing anything. Nothing is happening to me, you know. And it's, it's my faith true. So those are things that you, you look, look, look. And then slowly, if you don't read the Bible, you will be slowly, slowly like the, 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 the thing become darker and darker and darker and you don't see the light anymore. And you, you, you'll get used to the darkness, so to speak. Yes. Thanks, William. Now, friends, I like this push and pull factors. Now, you see, sometimes, uh, uh, I think the main thing that takes our focus away from God, uh, from the Lord, would be the sin factor, isn't it? Huh? Once we get uh, entangled, and once we uh, succumb to sin, and then uh, we, we take our eyes upon, uh, out of Jesus. Huh? Uh, that is the, the sin factor uh, in general. And then uh, uh, William did hint on this about a work. Uh, we are busy. We are so busy. One of the things that is strange is huh, when we are working and we are praying for a promotion, and then the Lord blesses us with a promotion. And then with the promotion, we become so busy and we've got no time for God. We've got no time for the Lord, no time for the church. Because what has come as a blessing has now has become like a hindrance. Because with the promotion, now we are focused more on the work. And then we say, i got no time, no time for Jesus, no time for the church. So sin, work. And what about, uh, of course, those who are not uh, working at the students' uh, studies. Study itself can uh, make us uh, take our eyes off Jesus. And of course, there are some who will even go some crookish way to make success in their studies uh, and so focused on the, on the study. What are the other things that can make us uh, take our eyes off Jesus? Anyone to add on to what we have mentioned so far? Sometimes family itself can become a problem, you know. We have uh, so uh, engrossed with our family and uh, so busy. And uh, we take our eyes off Jesus, fully focused on what the family needs. Family needs are important. Actually, it becomes easier with focus on Jesus. Jesus becomes our enabler. But if we say we are so busy, we've got no time for Jesus, then it can become a problem. And what about our hobbies? And what about our entertainment? And uh, of course, the other thing that can take our eyes off Jesus, uh, moving close to sin, but a wrong company. We keep wrong company, they will say things that uh, to, and influence us, so wrong influence. That can also make us take our eyes off Jesus, and uh, which is dangerous. Anything else to add to what we have said thus far? What can take our eyes off Jesus? And uh, so that is something that we want to be careful. Huh? And uh, so I have also put a discussion question four. In what ways can our spiritual lives be affected if we do not fix our eyes on Jesus? So we do not fix our eyes on Jesus. We are attracted, distracted, deceived. And then uh, what happens? What happens to our spiritual life? Anyone? This is discussion question four. Your life becomes wayward without yes. focus. Our life becomes wavered. Huh? We are off target. And we will begin to do things that we should not do. One of the things that will happen is it will affect our priorities. It will affect our priorities. It will surely affect our perspectives. And uh, we will become uh, selfish. We can even become critical, you know. Because uh, now our focus is not on Jesus. Then we are got involved in other things. 
and uh, then we begin to see you know, hey, you know, people will see and uh, we may not see and uh, people say I, I'm all right I'm okay I'm all right you know we may just still come to church we may even still read the Bible we may even still uh, uh, pray but that, but those could be just uh, you know, going through the routine it may not really be one of seeking God and uh, then it becomes uh, and uh, and of course, the other thing is what actually the writer is uh, uh, hinting very strongly. Yeah? Keep your eyes so that you will not go, grow tired or weary and discouraged. And that's what he says. You know, keep your eyes on Jesus so that you will not get weary or uh, discouraged. And that exactly will happen. And we are so involved in so many other things. No more Jesus is no more in the picture. Uh, then we can get tired. I, I, I'm tired. I'm tired. I, I'm discouraged. Uh, because I've got to attend to so many things. And friend, this is so easily. That's why so easily we get entangled. And we need to be careful. And that is why he is warning. And he says, uh, yes, yes, Julie. I'm sorry. I just thought of it. Uh, I just want to say, add uh, culture. Sometimes culture is, uh, especially in Africa, that uh, I, I hear Lily always telling me about uh, the African culture. Actually, they drew away a lot of fantastic Christians. Because of the family culture, the pool is there. They don't want to be disloyal to the family. And then the Bible did say that you honour your father, you honour your mother. So it's very hard for them to actually... Uh, break off from the family culture. Yeah, thanks, uh, Julie. Now, this is a very uh, sensitive and challenging thing, isn't it? Huh? We are uh, told, on the one hand, huh, honor your parents, and then the, in our cultural settings, our parents themselves can become a problem because they see us uh, getting, uh, in their mind, uh, maybe wrongly religious, huh? and then they may, can uh, become a problem. But actually, we must realize that no culture is above uh, Christ. And uh, everything has to be subject to Christ. He is Lord and no other. So we cannot bow to any other except for Jesus. But they can become. They can become. And uh, the, the, the whole thing about culture is such a wide uh, subject. Huh? And uh, we, we are... Traditions, we have traditions, we follow tradition, we follow culture. That can be a problem. Uh, thanks, Julie. Anyone want to add to what Julie has said? Uh, to anything that we are saying, we are talking about how we are affected spiritually when we take our eyes from Jesus, when we take our eyes off Jesus. Yeah. Then the, the next verse. Uh, in verse 3 is what we are going to focus on. And uh, William, can you read verse 3 for us, please? Verse 3. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, uh, William. So that is our, the, the third verse, huh? consider him. Actually, uh, fix our eyes on Jesus is one thing. Consider him is to go a little bit further, isn't it? Huh? Fix our eyes is just look, look at Jesus, look at Jesus. But consider him is uh, thinking about Jesus uh, and all that he had to undergo. And he says, who endured such opposition from sinful men. Now, Jesus was sinless. He was perfect. So there's, there's no fault as far as he is concerned. But yet he uh, allowed himself, he subjected himself to the opposition that came from sinners, that came from the wicked world. Huh? So it says here, uh, consider him, consider him who endured such opposition. Now he, of course, Jesus got opposition uh, from all kind of people, and uh, they opposed him, and they challenged him, but uh, you know, we have to consider what he endured, such opposition. Now, Jesus, in humility, 
willingly submitted himself to the wicked plans of man. So they came. They know they, it was not easy and they, they opposed. They opposed. And of course, Jesus is perfect. Not that he, he uh, lacked anything or did anything wrong, but the, the wicked world couldn't uh, no, uh, go along. And so they opposed. They opposed him. And so uh, consider him and who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Now, uh, now seeing what Jesus did will help us not to become tired and give up easily. You know, when, uh, when, we, when we exercise our faith and we do what is right, and then when people mock or people oppose and say all kinds of things, and then we get discouraged, we get tired. But it says, uh, keep your focus on Jesus. Jesus actually suffered uh, injustice, isn't it? And then we say, Lord, why can't God do something? You know, why God wants to let me go through such injustice? But he went through injustice. He went through injustice and uh, 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 I, it, my mind goes to the book of Habakkuk. Huh? Where Habakkuk is complaining to, to God and he says, uh, Lord, how can your eyes even see this uh, injustice? Uh, look at what he was talking about Judah, his own country, and he's saying, China. but uh, the answer that God gave him was the just shall live by faith. So even when suffering comes and all that, we just believe God and say, I will do the right thing. I will do the right thing and God will do what is necessary. And uh, so the point that he makes is who endure such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Two things uh, are important. Yeah? We do not grow weary means we don't get tired. And then don't lose heart means don't get discouraged. Now these two things can really come heavy upon us when we go through uh, in our Christian life suffering this name. We get tired and we get discouraged. Friends, make your comments before I go to the question. What do you all think? Look at Jesus. Look at the cross. Look at his suffering. And as long as we see what he endured, look at his suffering. Look at all the things that came. Look how his trial went. Look at the mockery of the trial. All the the whipping and all that that he endured. And look at him so that you don't get tired or discouraged. Anyone? The problem is, uh, you see, when uh, we face all these challenges or discouragement, we always ask, why me, Lord? Why me? Yeah. And the mere fact that we are mere mortals, yeah, looking at Jesus makes us feel so small and so humble that it is sometimes so difficult to uh, to uh, to say that yes, look at him and see what he has done for you, and continue what you are doing because we are simply mere mortals and he is just way way above what what we are capable of doing. Thank you, Tony. Going on that point, uh, when we look at Jesus, he suffered though he was sinless. When we suffer, sometimes we are contributing to that problem also. You know? The problem is there. Yeah. And uh, we may be, to start with, we might be not wrong. Lah, but uh, along the way, we also have our fault. But Jesus was never like that. All the way, he did the right thing. But on our side, and so when we look at Jesus and say, wow, he who was sinless, he underwent such. So whenever we are challenged in our Christian life for what, for the stance that we take, we must uh, be encouraged and uh, never get weary or tired or discouraged from what we see. Yeah? And uh, yeah, so that's uh, an, an important thing. But I'm actually going to my discussion question five is slightly different from what we have talked thus far, but an important thing because uh, 
uh, earlier on we talked about uh, run the race that is marked out for you uh, so in discussion question 5 this is my question how can we know the path that is marked out for our individual race and what can help us run with perseverance so there are two parts here you know what can help us know the path that is marked out how do i know this is the race this is what god wants me to do how can we know the race marked out for us anyone i think i answer the first question first in the sense that uh, when you know that this is your race is that you get confirmation confirmation not not only from uh, people around you but from god itself god will keep a uh, blessing that uh, that race that you do even if you put obstacle that he will empower you to do something to overcome it and then there will be confirmation like encouragement you know he will inspire you to go further then you realize that uh, okay this is the race that i have to run unless such times that you don't get any confirmation from anybody then you realize it's actually not there uh, pastor i just want to add to what julia said if i have been talking to uh, tony e about law of this and we talk about the church when we started the uh, wesleyan community church a lot of people say that hey don't play play church you know you can only last 6 months you know this is not something that easy to know we have actually lasted for 17 years and you know what do we look back and say oh we, it is our by our efforts no we know that it is god that has actually marked this path for us we have come up and all of us have grown you know all of us have grown spiritually and, and matured in the faith because most of us were pew pew sitters or or sitting in care wesley comfortably enjoying our lunch and tea but you see the thing is god has marked up the the, the the thing for us and we know that as we progress god blesses us and keep on blessing us and keep on moving us and encouraging us so we know so this is the, the question your first question uh, answer your first question yeah we we'll keep to the first question first so uh, you're right how do we know this is the part then we you know we see the blessing that god gives along the way and then that comes as a confirmation and uh, there's something that is important uh, so you all can look back uh, the 17 years of uh, running the race and uh, I, i actually it came out of a burden you know and it came out of a burden and uh, then you uh, no not ran no, this is the way something that is slightly different from uh, a burden is uh, will also be how do i know the race marked out for me if that question was posed to me i would say Uh, much dependent on the call of god the call of god now the call of god is that which i uh, which i sense and that god gives me a burden when i was working in the statistics department then god made me see the need and then he says i want no i want you to go and tell the good news the call of god and then the call of god must be Uh, alongside the confirmation of the leaders or of the church now this is uh, very uh, uh, important huh? so the confirmation can come uh, i think both julie and uh, william were in a way uh, showing along that line uh, then there are uh, there are things that happen positively we grow and then there is something good edifying and then that's a confirmation the call of god is to go to a path shown a need we go on a path and the confirmation comes from encouragement from the edification that comes and then we go down that path so it's so important to know at every point of our life the race marked out for us and uh, the call is important at, at all aspects for me if god wants you to be a sunday school teacher there must also be a call of god you don't just volunteer to be yeah? you volunteer when you respond to that call and uh, whatever else leadership in the church it's a call of god and then we feel okay the lord wants me to do this uh, this particular responsibility and then i go down that path go down that path and a confirmation comes through uh, people who recognize and then they will say hey you you did the right thing you know i am blessed we we are blessed and that is important 
That's the first part. Now, how do we know? The second part is what can help us run with perseverance? I think Julie wanted to say something. She said, first part, I will answer first. Julie, you want to add on how can we run with perseverance? Uh, Pastor, I'd like to clarify this. You know, uh, like you say, call of the God. Uh, not, not everybody will be called, you know, actually called. But you will know that that is something that you need to do. So in your, in the whole, in your whole life, you'll be called many times for different, uh, I mean, not everybody will be called to become a pastor like you. You, know, you get what I mean? So like for us ordinary uh, 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 believer, we may be called to do something at a certain time. Yes. I'm just saying to say that uh, the call can be in spots of your life. It's not uh, 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 the final one. Yes. I mean, it's not a long uh, stretch, a permanent one. Because I read the book, uh, not uh, it will be a progressive one. I read the book uh, written by Lim, Lim Sun Hock. And I recognize that is quite true in, in a person's life. That yes. you, it's, it's like you are being called at different juncture of your life. Okay, you become a leader of this church uh, in, in this capacity. And then later on, when you retire, you may go somewhere else and you may go and do something else completely, but related to visionary. So that's what I'm trying to say. Sorry. Absolutely right. Absolutely agreed, uh, Julie. That's why I said, uh, you know, to even be a Sunday school teacher or to do ushering or to do visitation, there's, there's always a call confirmed, then people are blessed, edified, and they they will keep changing. Even for me, the call to be a pastor was not one and final, you know. Then uh, God called me out of that particular uh, you know, responsibility. And uh, so we can be a leader in one time, then we can retire at different juncture, different call will come, different burden will come. So our race keeps you not know, changing in that sense. Huh? and different ways God wants us to walk. So sensitive it must be. That's why fix our eyes on Jesus, keep looking to him, and then he will make sure uh, changing directions. But it's the same Lord, the same goal, running towards him. And it's an amazing thing that we do, isn't it? And uh, so when you said encouragement, yes. You know, when we, we are encouraged, we are blessed. And we grow. And it's not a negative thing thing, uh, is something that is positive. And uh, we also learn from the examples of others. Actually, uh, turn your eyes upon Jesus, fixing your eyes on Jesus is one thing. And then we learn from one another. We learn from one another. And then uh, we run. And we all run our race, you know, we are not in competition. Uh, who runs fast or who runs first? Uh, the race marked out for us. And uh, no, you uh, so uh, Julie, you're right. You know, this is not the one and final call. It's not like only the pastor or the missionary who gets the call from God. Actually, we ourselves can sense the feeling, and that feeling is a call of God that God gives. It comes in different forms and at different times. Anyone want to add to what we are uh, mentioning? And along the way. Let's say we feel uh, somebody comes and criticizes our ministry and says, hey, what you're doing uh, you know, and all that. While we have done our best, you know, there can be areas to improve. But if someone says something to discourage us, and then we look to Jesus. He's the pioneer. He's the perfecter. He's the one who endured the cross. And then we see a hey, he who did it all perfectly, he himself they found fault. He they crucified. I have faults also. And I must be encouraged to keep running my race. That's the way we have to see this particular passage. So what the writer is doing is, he is telling, look, we have so many you know, cloud of witnesses. And we say there's more than what we see in the Old Testament. We see so many more. They've all run. They've all had challenges. They all had their own uh, thing, but they went in faith and God helped them. And now it is our turn. It's almost like we have now received the baton. And as long as the baton is in our hand, how would we run our race? Looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Okay? 
Any other comment? Any other final quest question? Our time is up. And uh, friends, uh, this is the, the passage for today. And uh, tomorrow, uh, also an interesting uh, thing that you know, I'll, I'll be sharing with you. I'll share with you tomorrow. And uh, so I hope this study has been helpful. And God bless us as we uh, continue on other things till next week. Huh? Uh, let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for today's study, O oh Lord. Help us, Lord, to run with perseverance the, the, the race that is set out for us. You have marked out a particular path, O oh Lord. And as we, we get uh, discouraged, if we get tired, help us, Lord, to look to you, how you endured the cross, and you gave the best, and we are blessed. Help us do the same, looking to you and looking to good examples of people of faith and to run our race in this generation. Lord, for the glory of your name. Thank you for having been with us. Now we pray you send us with your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. See you tomorrow. Yes. Thank you. See you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, see you, Thank you Pastor. Everyone. Bye. 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 Take leave. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Ah, welcome, Jeremy. Yeah.